Hello, guys, and welcome back to Tech Talk with Ethan. And today I'm here with Robert Wiley, who is a stage manager um, in technical theater. Um, hello, Robert. Welcome to my show. Hello. It's good to be here. Thank you for, thank you for coming on and talking with me today. Um, I'm going to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little about what you, what you do in technical theater. Yeah, my name is Robert Wiley. I am a freelance production stage manager, so you can hire me to stage manage live productions for you. I've been stage managing throughout California, bouncing around over the past few years. I was uh, I'm born and raised in Stockton, have worked there, uh, worked in Livermore at Livermore Shakespeare, uh, went to school at Cal State Long Beach, where I did shows here in Long Beach before getting hired by the Western Stage in uh, Salinas, California, and I worked there for two seasons before coming back to Long Beach and working with uh, P3 Theater Company and uh, SER. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, just been bouncing around. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, a lot of back and forth, it seems like. Um, for our listeners who may not know, uh, do you want to go a little bit in depth of what the duties of a stage manager are? Yeah, so a stage manager is kind of the the Folk, well, we, we are the focal point of communication. So between the director and the uh, designers, director and the cast, you, all the information goes through you and you make sure that people know, uh, you know, notes or things that need to be done. Uh, you're in rehearsal, you're keeping everything on track, calling breaks. Uh, if you have um, people who are in actors equity, uh, you make sure that the equity rules are followed. Um, you take down blocking, and uh, then when the show comes, you're calling the cues for the show, and so making sure that everything that happens on stage happens when it's supposed to. Nice, very very important, of course. Yeah, <laughs> as as usual, <laughs> as everything you know, everything is intended for theater. Everything is important <laughs> in theater. Yeah, every role. Definitely. Um, what what attracted you to stage management? Uh, so I think most people are just kind of thrown into it. So I had um, done theater in high school and I knew I wanted to be on the technical side, but I was actually looking into going into light and sound design. And it was when I was in community college, I had a friend who was an actor and they were doing the show called Kiss Me Kate. And they were a week into rehearsal and still didn't have a stage manager. And so he kind of volunteered me to, to be the stage manager. He's like, oh, you'll, you'll be great. It'll be fine. And, you know, working in theater, I, I knew what a stage manager does. I just had never mm -hmm. done it. So I was thrown into that and did the show and I loved it. And uh, I didn't stop. I just kept taking on shows and have been doing that since until this, uh, all this happened and theater kind of stopped. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a great ride. Great. That's amazing. What, do, you have, do you have any interests outside of technical theater or any hobbies? Um, finding more hobbies uh, during during this time, but uh, I mean, I like doing um, outdoors kind of activities. I like to go hiking and camping. Uh, don't get to do that as often as I wanted to when I was doing theater because that takes up so much of yeah. your time. I've actually been able to do that a, a few times now during, during all this. Um, I love, I'm a big cinema goer. Um, so I, I love, uh, you know, watching movies and reading, you know, articles about certain movies and like books on how uh, movies are made and, and things like that. So that's, that's kind of what I, what I do in my spare time. Do you have a favorite TV, TV show, or TV show or movie you've seen? Uh, I, no, I don't know. I mean, there's so many good ones, but I mean, my favorite, I mean, film directors, like any film basically by Steven Spielberg, Christopher Nolan. Is, is amazing. I'm really excited for um, Tenant, which is going to come out, I think now later this month. It, it keeps getting pushed back, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Nice. I, I just into vinyl, right? You, you oh, like yeah. vinyl? Yeah. No, yeah. How's, yeah how, how'd you get into that? Or, uh, I had in college, when I was at CSULB, I had a roommate who was a, a music major. He played the trombone and he had a, a vinyl record player that we had in our dorm room. And so I, I, I thought that was cool. So I got into the records from- Nice, like, do you have a favorite vinyl, vinyl you, you like, vinyl, vinyl artist? Uh, film scores, I, I have a lot of film scores. So John Williams, mm -hmm, uh, yeah. so I have a lot, of, a lot of John Williams on, on vinyl. Yeah. Great, 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 great composer, of course. Yeah, <laughs> the best composer of our time. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, you know, Steven Spielberg is, you know, I mean, not a composer, but 
right? Is he not? Is he? They, 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 they work role? together. Steve, okay. Steve Spielberg. Yeah, John Williams has done most of his movies. Yeah, nice. composed nice. music for them. I, I thought they had. They went hand in hand. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Did Did you get many? Do Do you Do you, do you get to see many live performances? Um, as like in the audience, or do you mostly stage manage? Yeah. Uh, do I Do I see a lot of live? Performances? Yeah. Like or like just like going you know going to the theater and seeing seeing the show without stage managing. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I love to. I mean, yeah, when you do theater, you also gotta have to um, take in theater as well. So yeah, I love watching live shows. Before all this happened, I had seen uh, Eurydice at um, LA Opera, which was really cool. Um, I had seen some shows at my alma mater, CSU will be. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, when I can, yeah, I love to to, to watch um, live theater because. It's, it's part of the craft and 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 even when you're not doing it you know it's good to see um other works of course definitely do you have do you have a favorite type of show that you've seen or genre i don't i like both musicals and straight plays there's there's something magical about both um yeah uh <laughs> that's all i can say yeah, I, love, I love them both i originally especially for working on I used to consider myself just uh, to specialize in straight plays until I got mm. hired um, on the musical Hair uh, in 2018. And uh, after I did that show, I fell, fell in love with, with musicals. And so I've done quite a few since then. So yeah, there's, there's something that each brings to the table for sure. Mm -hmm. for, so back, back to stage management, do you have, do you have a, do you have a process of, of how that of how that works for you personally, how you go through that process. Of just stage managing in general? Yeah, oh, it's like the, the steps and all that. Let's get into that, the steps and steps of steps of stage managing show and what that looks like for you personally. Sure, so uh, once you're hired, you uh, have this thing called prep week, which is basically a week before you have first rehearsal. You get most of your paperwork out of the way. So uh, cast lists, uh, welcome letters, uh, initial props lists, things like that, that you get out of the way. So when you have your first rehearsal, you already have all these things prepped. Uh, depending on the production, uh, if it's an original work, you've printed the scripts out for the cast, you put them in binders, uh, and you hand those out uh, on the first day. And then as revisions come, you, uh, you put those on different colors of paper so you're able to track the revisions and they don't get uh, swept in with the, you know, the old stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's your first week. Then when you get into rehearsals, you, like I said, you um, call breaks, make sure that equity rules are upheld, safety is upheld. You track uh, blocking, which is the movements on stage. You track props, uh, communicate um, the director's wishes to the designers in emails, in uh, rehearsal reports. And, um, uh, production meetings that you have throughout the process. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of information. That's, no, that's, good. that's what, what happens in stage management. Um, sure. And then uh, you get to tech week uh, where then you get um, cues from your designers and you move through the show uh, and you get a feel for the, you know, where the cues are, where you need to call them. Uh, like I said, everything that happens on stage um, through technical means, the stage manager is calling that, whether it's, you know, lights, the fly, the sound effects. Um, and then when you get through tech week, your show opens and the director leaves and it's up to you to maintain the director's vision of the show and to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So that, that's basically a big, broad overview of, of the stage manager's responsibilities. Great, that, that, that's awesome. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, do you have, you have it's so basically basically like calling a show like you're you know call, calling cues and stuff like to to call cues on time how how do you get how do you get practice with that you know like calling you know exact cue on this on this line how to practice wise for you oh hi i mean yeah you learn it by doing it. i mean that's what tech week is for it's 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 a big deal for, for the stage manager obviously because that's where you learn the rhythm of the show and where everything is supposed to be and then you know that's the time where if something goes wrong you stop yeah, and the designers talk to you, or you talk to 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 whoever you need to to figure out, you know, how you fix it and where these things need to be called. Um, and then you go home and you clean up your prompts book because sometimes uh, cues are uh, added or taken away, and you look through your prompts book and uh, you know just 
I, I've known people who, uh, you know, as they're on the treadmill, they're, uh, they're looking through their, their prompts book, you know, <laughs> trying to remember all the cues are, calling the show mm-hmm. in their head. And, you know, it's just through practice and, and actually doing it that you learn the, the rhythm of the show. Yeah, that's, it, it seems like a lot, a lot of extra work that goes into that to, you know, learn the, learn the steps of that. Oh yeah, I mean when you go home, you uh, when you're a stage manager, you still have a lot of a lot of work left to to do. <laughs> Actually, homework, you'd say. Yeah, a lot of homework. Yeah, for sure. Do you like to color code your scripts and and all that? Goodness. Um, I uh, there there are many ways you can write uh, cues in your book. Yeah, I do know people who say you know like they have like a green dot and that's like a sound cue and blue dots are, are light cues. I don't do that. I I number them and I have uh, a line going to the queue and, and you write the cues in the margins of the script. Uh, and, and I have, a, like I said, a line going to, to, to where the queue needs to be called. Because uh, I, for, for me personally, the, the colors in, in, the, in the script kind of are, are a little messy for, for me, but, but it's, it's all for however is best for the, the stage manager. And as long as if you know, you're hit by a bus, it's neat enough and, and clear enough that someone else can call the show if you can't. Mm-hmm. Nice. Is there is there a way you can call a show? I've heard, uh, this must be me, but have you um have you heard of like digi- digitally calling? Like, can you like you not have a prompt book in front of you? Can you do it digitally, like on like an iPad or something? Is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can have a, the script on 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 an iPad and and just flip through that instead. Like I I like tangible things, so I I, I prefer to have a physical um paper script to, to mm. flip through uh you know also means you don't have to worry about you know a battery somehow running out or, or the ipad dying somehow but yeah for sure there are stage managers who have now converted to, to g- digital prompt books for sure nice and it, it's like is there like I, I know it's like there are, are there certain buttons right you put like can you can you do like in big theaters that have equipment do can you push a button and it, things happen right is that uh, they 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 cue they cue people so so you're not making the said thing happen but yeah they're especially for like fly systems you have um, buttons that that put them on standby and then when you click it again that means that they go yeah. so you don't have to physically verbally call it you just press the 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 button but but it's the operator who who makes that thing happen have you worked with have you worked with have you been in theaters that have those, those I haven't yet no I haven't, I haven't been in in one that that would, um use use that system but I, I like to it's it's an interesting thing to 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 definitely um experience uh but yeah a lot of the bigger you know broadway and you uses that that type of system so it just depends on where you are but you know stage managing each show is different and you run into to, to different things and you you're always learning so yeah i can't wait to to learn that system but i, I have yet to nice it's the like cool to do you know to have have you know everything up to touch your fingers to like you know this and this and <laughs> you know yeah well especially um, if you're, cool. you're calling a, a lot of cues at the same time to not have to say you know especially if you have like light and sound cue and rail cue you know you, you could just verbally call the lights and sound and just have to press a button for the, for the rail cue so you're not like you know throwing out word salad and yeah oh <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> exactly do you is there a way is there a way that you could you explain like the process of like labeling each 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 sound sound cue and each labeling cues in general in a script? Yeah. So before you get into tech week, you usually have what's called a paper tech with your designers, and so that's the director and um, your your light sound designer, uh, rails if if you if you have them, so so your tech director or set designer, and you go through the show and uh, you talk about the cues and where they're going to be placed and what they are. Usually they have printed out um, Excel spreadsheets. So as the stage manager, you lead that meeting and you go straight down the lists and you know you say, okay, we're gonna plug this in here and this here. And then you know the director will give their input and they say, well, how long is this gonna be? Or I'd like it to be this long. And so yeah, that's uh, that's a very important meeting that that you you do right before you go into tech to make sure you have a good idea of where things are before you even jump into tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then once you're in there, that's where you do the fine tuning or, or add or remove things. Nice. Do you have, so like if you had two sound cues, like if you had one after you had a sound cue and a sound cue, would you label the first one like, like S, you know, S, S1 for sound one and then you'd label it, you know, S2 then for sound two, sound cue two, right? The, the labeling is, 
usually how, how I've gone about it, usually the designer is the one who who says what what it is. So so from that list, you just write it in your your book as it said. Yeah, a lot of times light cues are numbers and sound cues are letters. Uh, so yeah, you'll have A, B, and then you know. Once you get to Z, you go back to AA and then BB and, and then so on. Nice. It seems like a confusing process. You're going from, you're switching up, you know? Yeah, I mean, yes, you're going in, in order. So so you're not getting too too confused. And then it depends on, you know, the how fast something needs to happen, whether it'll just be an auto follow or if you're just going to say go, go for, for said cue. You know, it depends on what the director wants or how you as the stage manager feel. You know, it's like I can call it in that time or, or I can't. So it's that's that's what the tech process is for to figure that stuff out. Do you want to explain what an auto follow is to our viewers? Yeah, so an auto follow is uh, so you'll trigger the first cue. So let's say it's QA, and then the next cue would be B. So you trigger QA, and then you don't need to do anything. Uh, QB just follows right after. So you don't, as a stage manager, you don't need to say. QA go, QB go, because it just follows right after. Nice. And can you do that? And and you can use app. You can use application like um, applications for that, right? It's like have have it go. You hit a button, right, and it goes like you know. Yeah, yeah. So for, uh, that's usually for like things like. I mean, you can have that for for like cues too, but I, I'm talking about in in terms of sound cues. And usually mm -hmm. you use um, Q Lab, and and you. I mean, but all the the Q systems that you can do that in. Nice. Um, it's 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 been, it's been a tough time with no live theater. Of course, everyone's experienced this, especially us in technical theater. Um, uh, as as a person who who stage manages, like, what is your most? What would you say like is the most exciting part of going back to like live theater? What would you like? What are you most excited about? Oh, I mean the the live aspect. I mean, you're because you're, you're physically there. You're working with these people. You have all these you know amazing elements. You're on a, a stage. You have the, the lights and, and the sound, and depending on if it's a musical, whether you have an orchestra or, or even just pre-recorded music, it's, it's, it's magic. I mean, that's what live theater is. It's um, and yeah, it's it's tangible, and that's what's what's so so cool about it. Uh, and also the the collaboration. I mean, obviously you can collaborate and with with people on you know Zoom and stuff, and that's been going on with with all these Zoom productions. But you know, to actually be there with with people, it's I think it's more fun. <laughs> I agree <laughs> completely. Do you have, have you have been, have you been uh, doing any live, uh, sorry, not live. We're not doing live things right now, sadly. <laughs> um, but v virtual shows, have you stage managed any virtual shows? Uh, no, I've, uh, I've been offered and I, I tried to take one on, but with, um, you know, everything that's happening, uh, I had to focus on, on other things, sadly. So yeah, but yeah, I can't wait for, for, you know, live theater to start back up so I can start working at, at that again. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, like, it'd be cool to do virtual, you know, but I think it'd be hard, obviously, you know, since you're not in a the theater and doing, you know, that. I mean, pe people are making uh, the, the the best that they can out of it. I mean, it's, I mean, I've seen some pretty cool things with, with these virtual productions. I mean, you know, where you have like the, the, the backgrounds photoshopped in and, and and things like that people actually wearing costumes so I mean people are getting creative which is really cool to to see uh but yeah nothing beats that that live <laughs> yeah uh, person aspect for sure exactly um what what's what would you say like what skills or trainings does does stage manager have to go through to like get to where where you are now uh so skills you need to be organized and you have to have good communication the two biggest ones uh, because like I said a lot of information goes through you as the stage manager and it's your job to communicate that to everyone to make sure that they understand uh, and that um, the knowledge is presented in a clear concise way and then that organization plays into that as well where you have to make sure that you know your paperwork is organized uh, so you know people aren't confused by anything, but if they are, you're there to to answer any questions because you're on you're on top of it all. Uh, as far as training, uh, I mean, if you're a you know if you're in a technical theater program, you know, uh, take stage management classes if you can. If you're not, but you still want to do theater, I mean, if you're once again in school, stage manager show or ASM a show, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, you can only learn it really by doing it. Like I said, it seems that. Most stage managers I know were just thrown into it and they didn't have any prior experience. The best way to learn it is by 
doing it. The theater is a very physical uh, thing. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to explain? Do you want to explain what ASM does if people don't know? Yeah, so, so ASM is assistant stage manager, and they're there to help the stage manager out with anything that they need. Sometimes you have one, sometimes you have a, a few of them, two, um, two or more, uh, depending on you know the size of the show. And they're there to help out with any extra paperwork. You know, if the stage manager is busy with something else, they're there in rehearsals to either be on book or mm -hmm. write down blocking. Uh, so yeah, they're another integral part of the team, especially for the stage manager to make sure to lift some of the burden off of the stage manager so that they don't get crushed under the the weight. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're a super important part of the the team for sure. And then, and then and then like if like something happens where the stage manager couldn't couldn't do the show, would they would they do the show then? Yeah. Yeah. So so if something happens to the the stage manager, once again, if you you hit the the the, the <laughs> The saying is that if you're hit by a bus, then then you know you make sure that your prompts book is there and that it's neat and tidy, and that your ASM can pick it up and then call the show. So as a stage manager, you have to make sure that they also know the show backwards and forwards, and that they have a good idea of the cues that are in the show. Uh, you mm -hmm. know that they've looked through your your prompts book and kind of at least seen it a few times, and maybe even like during a tech sit with you if, if they can, but usually they're backstage doing stuff. But yeah, as, as long as that they um, have a general idea so that, you know, they don't get just thrown into it and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know like <laughs> even where, how many cues are in the show. So yeah, but, but that's where the organization comes in as a stage manager. You want your book to be presented in a clean and organized way so it can be read and, and um, understood, especially if say right before a show is you know the asm is told you have to call the show and they can just sit down look at your book flip through it and you know uh, cue those cues exactly very important obviously <laughs> you know as <laughs> again again everyone technical theater is important as i it's For my sure. motto you know <laughs> uh, could could you describe what what a union is like you know stage management unions yeah and so in general in in theater stage managers are part of Actors' equity, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have the actors and the stage managers in the same union. Uh, and it's funny because this was the the hundredth year that stage managers were in the union. So nice. this, this year was supposed to be the year of the stage manager, but that didn't quite pan out because live theater was canceled. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Um, but the the union, I mean, like all unions, it's there to make sure that uh, whoever's in it has. Um, benefits whether that's you know medical benefits or they can have negotiations for pay so for for higher pay um things like that uh with actors equity you either uh, accumulate points by working on equity shows and eventually you get your equity card once you pay your dues or you are offered an e equity contract if you pay those dues then you're you're in the in the um union are you part of actors equity no, sadly not. I hope too soon. The once you're in Actors Equity, um, it, it's kind of you have to be at the right stage in your career to 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 be a part of it because tech. Well, not technically. You're you're not supposed to work on non-equity shows once you're in Equity, and and if you mm -hmm. do, then it's kind of a, a big no-no. Or you, usually, when people do that, they they use a, a pseudonym, you know, a fake name, so that they don't they don't get in trouble. So yeah, when you're part of equity, you just have to make sure that then you can get equity shows after that, because to to um, maintain your equity status, you have to work on a certain number of um, weeks uh, of equity shows a year while also paying your dues. So, you know, it's, it's just things to, to consider, you know, when when you're at the right point in your career and you feel like that you should be equity. And if you're especially if you're offered an equity contract, then go for it if you can, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've, obviously, I've obviously had the pleasure with, with working with you, Robert, uh, on Day After Day, P3's, P3 Theater Company's production um, we did recently um, before before this all hit. Um, Pre-COVID, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah pre-COVID. Um, and I, 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 I love working with you, obviously. You're a great guy um, and just love how easygoing you are and, you know, chill with everything. Um, and uh, are you always like that, like in stressful situations? And how do you deal with that? I mean, so as a stage manager, you have to be. I mean, in, in live theater, things come up all the time and you have to make sure that, you know, you deal with it because 
something has to be done and you're the one steering the ship. So you have to know that going in. And so, you know, when something happens in a show, because that's always in the back of your mind when, when you are the stage manager. So when something comes up, you're automatically saying to yourself, ha, 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 how do I solve this? Um, so yeah, just, just to deal with the stress, you have to keep a, a clear and calm head and always think about, you know, okay, how am I going to solve this when something comes up and the best solution, the safest solution as well, because you're there to, you know, depending on what the situation is, you're there to ensure safety for your actors and also, you know, the audience. Mm -hmm. For sure. Do you, uh, are there any, like, have you found online, are there good trainings or videos for stage managers who are learning or? Uh, I don't know about that. I, I On YouTube, you can find things from, uh, you know, behind the scenes of Broadway shows where they interview stage managers and you can see, you know, a little bit of, of what they do on Broadway, especially and kind of what their process is. Um, but like going like step by step, I, I don't know of, of any, I'm sure that there is somewhere. Um, but like I said, the best way to learn stage management, stand, ooh, stage management is by doing it. <laughs> of course. Uh, so yeah, if you have the opportunity to, to take on a show as an ASM or even just, you know, a, a PA and, 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 you know, pick the stage manager's brain and, and see how they go about everything, then, then go for it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ASM to show or have you only stage managed? Oh, you know, the funny thing is, yeah, I've a, a, ah, I can't talk right now. <laughs> ASM once. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and, and that was after I had already been a stage manager. So, you know, I knew that's like, okay, I'm here for the stage manager. What do you need? What can I get you? Uh, I was before everything was shut down from the, for the pandemic, I was working with SCR and I was a stage manager intern uh, for a show that they were doing. So you had the PSM and then, uh, I mean, we're called stage manager interns, but we were basically the ASMs. So I was an ASM uh -huh. on that as well. And that, and that was cool to see, um, you know, how this uh, PSM they brought in uh, did things. Sadly, I couldn't see his whole process because the show was canceled only, I think, two weeks into rehearsals. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good, so even if you are a stage manager, if, if you, I mean, there's always more that you can learn. So if you want to take, you know, an ASM job to, to see how someone else stage manages, then yeah, go for it. Because you're in this job, you're always learning. And, and that's that's the, the key is that you're always picking things up for, for the future. And so, you know, uh, through your experiences or how you've seen others deal with things, how to, how to go about certain situations. Would you, would you say like, you usually start off as an ASM and you move your way up to, to SM, you know, SM? Is that uh, how it works usually? So, so if you're starting, it, it, it kind of depends. So like, if you're starting in school, you know, especially like at community college, like I did, it's kind of maybe not easy, but like, it's easier to be thrown in just as the stage manager and so that, that, that's what happened to me. But yeah, I mean, if you're in a more professional setting or at, or at like a four year, then yeah, you probably start off as an ASM or a PA and then work your way up. So, I mean, just, just you know, if you take it on, you know, if you've never stage managed before, but you take on being the stage manager, just know the, the um, responsibilities that come with it. And, you know, it's, it's tough learning on the fly, but, you know, if you feel like you can do it, then, then go for it. But like I said, it helps when you're in um, not as a professional setting, you know, you're not going to yeah. be able to just be hired on, you know, a, a professional production if you've not as a stage manager, if you've never stage managed before. So, yeah, I mean, in theater, you, you, you have to work your way up. I mean, me as a, as a, you know, PSM right now, if I wanted to go to Broadway, say, I would probably start as a PA, you know, and then have to work my way up. I mean, that's just how it is. It depends on the setting that you're in. Mm -hmm, of course. Could you, could you, do, would, would you, would you say you're more of an introvert or extrovert? I think I walk the line of both. Uh, I, I, I certainly like to, don't like big crowds and I like to be on my own, but at the same time I do, especially during this pandemic, miss being around people, especially, you know, theater people and, and having, you know, to, to, to corral big, big casts. Uh, yeah, so, and, and for uh, the job, you can be either an introvert or an extrovert. You know, there are plenty of stage managers who are introverts, but they know when to turn on, you know, the, okay, I'm gonna do public speaking now because I have to talk to, you know, the cast or the designers of the crew. And, you know, when you get home, then you're just like, okay, I can turn it off. And yeah. So yeah, you can be either an introvert or an extrovert for, for, the, for the job. The, would, you, the would you say like, what, what, what would be the biggest show you've, you've stage managed and like, biggest cast or 
biggest production? Uh, probably a, a Vita, I think. Uh, we had a cast of like 30, so, so nothing like crazy, nothing crazy big. Um, but yeah, it's it's always fun to to, to work with a, a big cast. Uh, it's a lot a lot for the stage manager to do, you know, with tracking various things. So that, that makes it uh, more interesting. The, the show you just mentioned was P3 Theater Company's inaugural show of this first season. Yeah, you guys did. Do, yeah, P3 did do Avita, but but it, I didn't do it at P3. Oh. It was at the Western Stage in Salinas. Ah, nice. D different, different, different company. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But yeah. So that, that was that was one of the shows that, and then he worked on the show after Day for Day or oh. Avita. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, but I think we are going to uh, wrap the show up, guys. But thank you again, Robert, for for your for your knowledge and uh, and talking with me about stage management. Well, it's great to hear from you. Me. Yes, yeah, it's, we, always, it's always great to talk to you. Yeah, for sure, great to talk to you too. Thank you, man, so much. And uh, tune in next week at four thirty on Thursday to watch another episode of Tech Talk with Ethan. See you guys then.